Yeah, fuck that, right? Fuck that. Just fuck that. Say it to yourself deeply into your soul. Fuck that. Fuck that. Because <laughs> those fuckers can't even get to me. Yes, they cannot. They no. suck. They suck ass. They suck ass. So, um, I mean, this is going to be, uh, I've, I've done my three step on, uh, how to get through the coronavirus crisis. Um, I must admit, I meet the panic and the crisis more than I meet the corona. So, um, it's not so much about sanitizing or avoiding people, my three step plan. It's more about avoiding all the bullshit that comes with the new virus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, step one is stay calm, <laughs> right? Because right. one thing we know, I don't know anything about viruses. I'm, I'm completely ignorant when it comes to viruses. I don't know anything about epidemics. I, I have no idea what's actually going on in Italy, and I don't know anything about China. So um, I have no way of sitting through or sieving through or finding my way through all the insane amount of information and numbers and misdata that is being thrown at me. Right. I have no way of knowing. The waters are so muddy. I don't know about you, Grimnir. You might be an epidemic expert who knows all sorts about virus, but I am not. I am not either. Um all I know is is that we are being played big time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go with uh, stay calm because when I can't figure out what goes on really, how reality is, then I can go um, and just rely on my rational thinking and my common sense. And my common sense tells me a lot of things, but it tells me that when state and media agrees – and wants me to do something. Um, I'm going to keep my my eyes open for that, right? Right. I'm not going to jump into it. I also know what another thing when people throw numbers around all the time, they're probably bullshitting me. They are. There's no question about that. Yeah, because they have no way of knowing. Um, I, I spend, uh, I did one morning where I just went through all the media in Denmark and I looked at the wording, right? Yeah. And uh, for two hours I sat through Corona after Corona article and all the media. And one thing I noticed was none of them said so and so many died from Corona. Right. They all said so and so many died infected with Corona or so and so many died related to Corona. Right. Well, as as Grammy says, you know, is it did they die from Corona or with Corona? Exactly. Yeah. And and you have no way of knowing that, especially now when we don't know this disease or anything. So we have no way of knowing that. When they then start estimating, right, mm -hmm. and guessing, they're estimating and guessing on really bad data. Terrible data. Yeah. Uh, made up data is actually what it is. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a... So so from that perspective, I'm going to go with I'm never going to figure out what's up and down in this. I'm I'm probably never going to figure out how bad or not bad it is. Um so I'm just going to rely on my on my my core of I'm going to stay fucking weary about what state and media wants me to do. And if state and media together wants me to act in fear and and do certain things and behave in a certain way, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to be very critical about it, at least. Well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> but I will say this much. What's that? Um, I, I'm all for taking care of, of the people uh, around me in where I live that aren't as fortunate that they can survive this if this is um, as bad as it is. Because I got a neighbor, right? That guy next door to me, he's an older guy, mm -hmm. and he went through chemotherapy for leukemia all year last year. Right. And I'm doing my bit, whether or not 
however they say and all that, I'm trying to do my bit to help protect him. Well, that's right? good. I, I mean, what 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 do you do to protect him? I hate this. Yeah, well, um, well, normally when we have a crisis like this, and I know he's been ill, um, I would probably knock on his door and and ask him how he's doing and and talks like that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not. I send him a text message instead, and I'm staying away from him. Okay. Well, that's always good. So, so I'm doing the social distance, distancing mainly because my my uh, my employee told me don't come. So I'm going okay. Okay, that's good. Don't yeah. don't go. I mean, there's no reason to go there. No. Yeah. But one thing I'm not is I'm 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 not scared. I'm I know glad that. To hear that. The, the only uh, thing to be scared of is is the the reaction. Um, not not only the uh, governmental clampdowns across the world, but uh, the the people's adherence uh, yeah. and belief in in uh, in what they're doing and what they're saying. Uh, nobody 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 trusts the government. I mean, I mean nobody, but the majority of people don't trust the government. They don't trust the, the clap, the mainstream media, uh, and and yet they're they're. Did I, did I start recording? This? They're doing it. Yeah, they're yeah. doing it. And they're, they're buying every word. They're hanging on yeah. on, on yeah. the words of these people that they know are liars, that, yeah. that they know are just making shit up. And and, <laughs> and I see all the numbers. They're throwing around all the numbers. They're looking for the data. How many died today? Where is the data? How many of this? How many of that? Yeah. How this? Show me a graph. And uh, I'm going, but none of that is real. And I, and I told you just before we started here that crazy message I got on my cell phone, you know, oh, COVID-19 warning, stay inside, exactly. wash, wash exactly. your hands, freak out, yes. uh, you can't go outside. No. And since I know um, that uh, the the reaction from mass population, right, plus the reaction and force of state is... Um, it's actually what's scary and dangerous in this. Right. I know that I am part of mass population. So if, if I start spreading that energy too, then it's just going to spread around. So I'm really trying just to keep my energy down and, and be even more kind and even more calm and trying with even more love. Because at least I'm spreading that then. Yeah, spread that. Spread that love. Yeah. yeah. At least I'm not running around um I don't know. This is this is um this is like um defining the world from its maddest of edges, right? You know what I mean when I say that? Um I kind of, but go ahead and explain it. Yeah, so in, instead of um, actually looking at what is happening, because right now a lot of bad stuff is happening, a lot of idiots are behaving like idiots, but a lot of compassion, a lot of kindness, a lot of good stuff is coming from this. A lot of people are taking care of each other and being considerate, right? right. So instead of defining the reality of what's going on with all the bad shit, all the maddest, all the the worst case scenarios. The the three days from now, people are starving in the streets, and they're going to come in big flocks like zombies and steal all your stuff, right? Right. If you live in that, those are the maddest of the edges of the world. Sure, sure. Because you're defining it by the most extreme of what is going to happen, when reality is that there's some of that too, yeah, and there are idiots. But they're also really beautiful people, and there are really beautiful things going on. Right. And there are a lot of people taking care of each other and thinking about their societies around them and knowing that they're not alone in this, in both the good way and the bad way, right? Not being alone in something is a double thing, right? Right. So so, uh, so what I can do is I can I can try to mind my mind and and at least help spread some of the kindness and compassion and some of the wisdom there is in this because there is some wisdom too right 
we are so used to as humans to buy the illusion of control that we are in control of this world mm-hmm. and it's just an illusion uh, which is why we vote for government it's because we try to control um the unpredictability of human nature right so we have societies with uh, politicians and laws to try to govern all this um really unforeseen unpredictable behavior but it's an illusion, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can't control unpredictability and especially unpredictable human nature. Uh, that would mean that there were one cop per citizen and then what about the unpredictable cops, right? Doesn't work. Um, so, so this might be really good for humans to understand that basically and as a profound rule, we humans don't control anything. The world is fucking dangerous. <laughs> it can be, that's for sure. <laughs> it is. Yeah, no, I mean, it. Uh, I, I don't know if the world is so much dangerous, but uh, people are. And the world, too. I, I there's mean, tons of diseases. There's tons of shit that's gonna, that could happen. There's freak accidents. There are all this. Right. So, so going out into the world, even six weeks ago, was a nasty, disease-driven, uh, filthy place to be, right? Well, it, it, to some degree, sure. I, I mean, <laughs> you can certainly go out and, and uh, do all kinds of various things, have a good time, be productive, whatever. Um, exactly. Uh, but uh, there are always, <laughs> of course, dangers about yep. that if you uh, – are walking around with your eyes closed, then you're going to walk into a hole or bump into a wall or something. I don't uh, know. Just before we opened this, I read the most insane news story from somewhere where some guy uh, pushed a stranger lady into in front of a train on a train station. Right. For no fucking reason, right? And was that something that they did because of the corona thing, or they're just no, nuts? No, no, or? it's just insane, fucking, stupid, unpredictable people who are nuts. Okay. But <laughs> but that happened. That that happens, right? It's a possibility yeah, no, I that don't... every time I take the train and I I before this corona shit, I spent a lot of times on train station and in trains. Right. If I had done that by defining the maddest of the edges, right? Okay. If I'd lived my entire life um, trying, being in the awareness of, oh, my, somebody might come and push me into the track, somebody would do this, and this guy probably have some disease, and this guy's going to be, then I, I would either I would have to, um, I would go nuts, right? Yeah, you have to, like, crawl into a hole somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, so what we're doing now, the only really difference between the world now and the world six weeks ago is that we are now, by the state and media, defining the world by the maddest of its edges. We are now all focused on the worst possible scenario, on on all the illnesses and all this and this, and now this crisis comes, right? Yeah, but it's typical. I mean, whether it was a, a virus, a war, a... Yeah. Uh, who knows what, you know, all kinds of, I mean, just look at the, the frickin' politics in the United States, man. It, yeah. Every time we let media and state think for us, <laughs> we <laughs> end in madness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, me, media and state, it's, uh, they're, they're the same. Uh, they're, they're part yeah. of the, 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 the same group. Uh, well, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're sort of like, um, what, um, thoughts and feelings are. Sure the same thing comes out of the blue as you know (laughs) yes 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 yeah so i'm I'm just gonna say i'm um i don't spend my life usually living in the maddest of the edges in the worst case scenarios because that would drive me nuts so why would i do this now i don't know that information (laughs) <laughs> there's no reason oh, that's what I'm to. There, there's no reason uh, I, I, like I said you know this the, the whole thing this, I mean this virus okay it's a uh, a bad virus um, I 
you know, I'm sure it's a lab created virus, uh, origins of which are, uh, we could discuss if you wanted, uh, the possibilities of its mm. or origins anyway. And since we don't have any uh, factual information and we'll never get it, uh, mm. but that's a whole different thing. Um, but it's not, it, you're, you're a, healthy individual you're doing fine if you got this crap okay so you're going to be sick for a while but you're not going to die from it um and, unless you've got a bunch of other issues going on with you um, but i'm living in the reality that death can come and take me at every moment well right uh, yeah you know a meteor could come through your roof and uh <laughs> yeah. yeah that's 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 pretty much the awareness we go through as human beings from from once we start seeing it in our early teens and the rest of our lives, we all know that. Sure. You can die any moment. Shit happens. It does. And and there's yeah. you have no control over many things. Yeah. Uh, so um But you cope, right? You cope with that throughout your life and you uh, figure yeah. a way out to stay focused on not that but on other stuff. Oh, you just 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 sway the, the the mathematics of it. Uh, yeah. Odds are you're probably going to be just fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just don't go near cows. Uh, what's wrong with cows? I got nothing wrong with cows. No, they're one of the deadliest animals, right? <laughs> no, I I don't believe that. You look up how many people die from a uh, cow right. uh, uh, kick in every year. When, when I when I was a teenager, I used to work out on ranches in in Utah. And um Did yeah. you knock over sleeping cows? No, but I I would you know, I'd I'd have a, a, like a, a pen full of cattle I'd have to feed, you know, and I was, uh so I'd, you know, throw a hay bale in there and then the, the mm -hmm. cat the cows would want to jump you know, get ready. I, I was I was a little mean. <laughs> yeah. I'd i I'd jump over the over the rail after I put the bale in there and I'd sit So you never and, knocked over cows. I I'd jump over the rail and and I'd yeah. sit uh, sit on the bale. And all these cows would be like herded right, like right around me, nose to nose. They're like, yeah. "We want the hay," and I <laughs> and I'd poke them in the nose. <laughs> yeah. But and, then you didn't even. But know. there was, I mean, there was, cows, yeah. there, there was, you know, a couple dozen cows there, and they they deadly? No, not at all. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah, at all. Man. Look up how many people die from cows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe it. And anyway, so then then you feed the cows and they're all happy. And then uh, you, you do <laughs> yeah, I like cows. Yeah, no, they're they're fine animals. They, you know. Yeah. yeah. We have uh, but, fields uh, around the town that they they used to mow them right with big machines a yeah. couple of times during the summer. Right. And then a couple of years ago, they figured out, hey, why don't we um, borrow some cows? Yeah, um, why not? So we got these big fields, so now they borrow cows uh, from the farmers all summer, and they take the little cow fences and stuff, and then they just put out cows there. Great. So now we got cows. Terrific. So we go visit the cows. I like cows. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's just yeah. nothing wrong with them. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not I, a big fan I, of horses, I certainly, but I like cows. I certainly would never fear a cow. <laughs> no, I don't fear a cow. <laughs> No, I, I, yep, I, I probably do. I, I'd, I, if I gotta be honest, I do. I'd, I'd be more afraid of chickens. Cause, <laughs> really? Yeah, they got you know beaks to peck you with. They got sharp claws, you know, and and you know, not not that they're you know, not that they want to come after you, but if you, but if you gotta like gather up the chickens to put them in the coop or whatever, you know, you gotta grab them and and they're they're yeah moving around yeah. and so uh, uh, yeah. yeah and and so. You but might. you never, you never considered that a cow might step on your foot and then you're fucked. No. No. <laughs> a bull, a bull might. <laughs> I mean, they, they they have a different agenda than the cows. <laughs> yeah. But see, see, that's pretty much it. Because really, cows are dangerous, Grimner. Yeah, they're not. They're more dangerous than a Walmart, right? Oh, no, no, cows are not more dangerous than Walmart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you, you don't have Walmart, so you can't really judge. Uh, <laughs> no, I wish we do, because I kind of see it like a, um, um, an entertainment park, an amusement park. How are there no Walmarts in Denmark? There are no Walmarts in Denmark. How? How is that? A, 
How is that? I mean, I, I thought I thought. Walmart. We have little. We have LD. All right. Uh, we got no Tesco or Costco or Walmart. Okay. Tesco is the this big. Is, uh, that's the British thing, right? Tesco. Yeah. Yeah. Grocery store. Yeah, but they're also all over uh, Korea and Asia too. Okay. I saw uh, Tesco did the first uh, virtual um, grocery store in Korea. Uh, where they took a whole, it's kind of cool though. They had, uh, train stations, right? And the whole back end of the train station were pictures of, uh, groceries that were lined up. Like you had your milk and you had your bread and your, your meat and all that. And, uh, you would just use QR codes on your phone. So when you were waiting for the train, you could go and shop and uh, it would just land in your phone. And if your train came, then you just took it. And the next train station where you had to shift trains or something would have the same. So you'd pretty much do your shopping, and then you order, and by the time you got home, the shit has been delivered. Oh, okay. So they got those. Neat. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of neat, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you go around, so it's like shelves. So you got the different kind of milk and all that, and you just... Two of those, one of those, duh, 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 and then it, it it's there when you come home. Well, That's that... Tesco. Oh, okay. no. Um, the Danish groceries they mainly come from um, the cooperations. Okay. Um, much of the Danish economy, the especially for two hundred and fifty years up until the thirty forties ish uh, last century, uh, were built on cooperations. Um, what happened was that. Um, um, in, instead of a big revolution in Denmark against the nobles, right, when the king and the nobles owned everything and everybody else were just slaves, right. instead of that big French revolution thing, uh, the farmers went to the king and said, hey, yo, buddy, uh, we're going to revolution like in France unless you divide some land, right? Okay. And, uh, and he gave people a little bit of land, uh, but they still had the nobles who had the bigger pieces of land and the nobles had the money to buy the to build the mills, uh, the dairies and stuff like that. So uh, the nobles would say that, OK, you can use my mill if you work on my farm and my land five days a week and then you can work on your own piece of land and use my mill. Right. Sure. So you were back in the same fucking slavery, really. Yeah, sharecropping, um, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, the farmers, they said, oh, okay, well, what we could do is we could all get together and then we could build a mill. Um, then we won't have to use the nobles mill because I can't afford a mill and you can't afford a mill. But if we work together, uh, we can build a mill. So they built cooperation mills that wasn't owned by anybody, was but was owned by the the farmers that helped build it. So once they did that, they figured out, hey, wait, we can do this as stores too. Mm. Uh, so all the people in, in small towns built around these mills and, and farmers, they would get together and they would do a cooperation store. So instead of having to sell it on the king's market, they got their own little market and uh, they just bought stuff and the profit went back into the cooperation and into stocking up and rebuilding the store. So instead of having workers work there, people took turns working there and all that. And um, they did it with dairies and with eggshells. They did it pretty much all over for, for more than 200 years. Yeah, like a form of agorism there. Yeah. So uh, in the, you know, then in the 40s and 50s when industrial came, we started going more commercial. And during the 70s and 80s and up in the 90s, a lot of those stores that were cooperations started going corporate and commercial too. But they stick to their names. So they're still co-op, but now they're commercial. So they're owned by money men and they are not owned by the people who use them. But I think that kept a lot of the really big grocery lines out. Yeah, probably. I mean, why go to a big old conglomerate if you can just go to a local store? Yeah, but now the the, the big supermarkets here are big co commercial, but they they still named co-op, right? I do. Uh... So, uh, <laughs> but I think that's why we don't have to. And I, I and Denmark is not big enough for a big um, 
Walmart. The whole country of Denmark is not big enough for yeah, Walmart. You're not you're not gonna get uh, people you, from all the way in Jutland to drive eight hours to get to Walmart, right? Are you, are you telling me Copenhagen is not big enough for a Walmart? Copenhagen is one million people, and yeah. most of them. But you can't fit a Walmart in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing that's big so, in Copenhagen. So there's no real estate. The real estate's all taken up. Yeah, because Copenhagen used to be a itty bitty town that had um, water and uh, castles all around it, and all of the way up to the to like the twenties or ten state before they started building outside the castle walls. Mm -hmm. So Copenhagen is really small. Um, you, we don't have water guns. The cops here don't have water guns for riots because they can't get through the streets of Copenhagen. Oh. So it doesn't make any sense to buy them. So, so does anybody use... ride bicycles or something? Yeah, a lot of bicycles, not a lot of cars in downtown Copenhagen. Yeah. So, so people don't really have cars, and it's not they don't want to drive an hour out of town to get to a big place to shop and drive home again, right? I wouldn't want to drive an hour to get groceries, no. No. Especially if you got them trains that'll deliver the stuff right to your house. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of what you have in Copenhagen is you have a lot of smaller groceries. Yeah. But not those big ones. And I think those are amazing. I had a, a coworker who went to America and she came back. She talked for hours about Walmart. But what she said was, it has to say there's just more shit of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this year was like instead of having five different kinds of milk, they had like thirty different kinds of milk. Okay, they probably do. I don't I, know. If that's true. I don't, I don't know if that's true. Uh, You're the, not a Walmarter. Yeah, the local grocery store here, uh, Moriarty Foods. Um, it uh, there, there's I don't know. There's a variety of things, but it's certainly not thirty kinds of milk. We probably got twelve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I got three brands of milk to uh, go from. Actually, two. Uh, but they tricked me with the third one. And, and, I, and I know they, they recently changed their generic brand from one to another. I, I couldn't tell you which either one was. Oh. But um, <laughs> so yeah. so when I go in there, I'm looking for my normal stuff. It's like, well, this is not what I buy. <laughs> because um, here they would um, – Besides a couple of small dairies, all milk that comes comes from one big giant dairy called Ale. Yeah. Well, and a... They know they're in trouble. They know that we hate that. They know that, that we don't like that they're one big fucking brand and they bought up all the other dairies, right? Except for two small dairies. And one of them is right outside our town. Um so they know that. So what they do is that they will have their own milk called Ale, and then they will do this where they kind of hide its Ale. Ah, okay. So for the hipsters, they get a feeling that they're buying from a, something smaller that doesn't have monopoly, right? Yeah. But it's still Ale. Well, we have we have uh, local dairies and uh, <laughs> and cattle farm ranches, I guess, uh, and and some uh, you know other. Uh, basic stuff that that that's sold here in our local grocery store. So yeah. you can buy the local beef, the local cheese, the local various things. Not everything, of course, right. but yeah. uh, uh, that that's what they what they stock up in the grocery store. So yeah. uh, you're, you're, and this leads me to my step two of my three step plan, right? Okay, how to get through the corona? Because the first one was uh, stay calm and oh. don't. Try to define it from the maddest of the edges, but live in that zone where you know the world is dangerous, but you're coping with it and you're not panicking, right? Right. My two second step is uh, consume less. There you go. Yeah. Right. So, so, so we're a bunch of people who have to eat less for for a while. Oh no, uh, I'm gonna go with none of us. Uh, on RLM and loads of people are um, are not going to die because they have to moderate their calo calorie intake. Nah, we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with that. 
<laughs> that's a that's a good thing to go with. I'm going to go with people are not going to die because they can't get their favorite soda. Right? Nobody nobody here is going to starve to death. Um, yeah. At least so. not at least not for a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go with, and then we might have to moderate a little, but maybe moderation ain't a bad thing. No, it's good. Yeah. Because I'm going to go with that if um, maybe a lot of people want to want to learn how to drink water instead of soda just for a while. Yeah, no, water's great. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe a little less consumption. But then what I see is that instead of doing that, people went and bought shit. Oh. Yeah, well. By the tons. Yeah, encourage it. By the tons. Oh, no, I can't get my favorite snack. Maybe so I'll go buy three weeks worth of my favorite snack. Right. Fucking snack people. Yeah. And the the thing is, there there was no need to. There's no reason to. No, there is no reason. Because that is the other thing I really don't understand is how is this for real going to affect the production lines? That's uh, that's a different question because, I mean, since they're shutting everything down, I, I don't... I'm not sure how, you know? how the food manufacturers, uh, food But they're not shutting down food production here? Yeah, I, I don't think they are here either, but we don't really hear about that. All we hear is, you know, any place that you personally might want to go other than a grocery store yeah. is closed. Uh, yeah. And so all the employees are home. As far as the, 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 the food processing uh, factories, I, I guess they're still up and running because food's yeah. still coming into the grocery stores. Uh, trucker yeah. truckers are out there trucking, so food's getting to the grocery stores from somewhere. So obviously mm-hmm. those guys are still open and operating. And um, and uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I can, you know, um, when I opened the newspaper um, the other day, I saw a story from the farmers' union in Denmark where they were out showing us see. We're butchering, we're producing food, we got all the supply chains going, we are part of keeping Denmark open, and um, you might have to go without something that comes from outside of Denmark, we don't know yet. Yeah. But as for food, uh, we're we're making food for you people, right? Yeah, yeah, no, and that, that's great. You know, I've I've seen some memes that uh, show you that you didn't think you could get by without this, but here's here's the farmers. They're still up and operating. And so yeah. you want to thank somebody for for keeping you going during this lockdown. Thank the farmers. Thank the truckers. Yeah. Thank the grocery yeah. store people because they're still out there working. Yeah. So, uh, and so that, true, that, you might not be able to get a particular brand of something or that whatever shit you're getting from China. I don't know what <laughs> what kind of food you would want to get from China bat you know, soup. You or bat, Denmark. If, but if you're ordering bat soup, get it from China. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to go with that. Um and maybe it's back to the whole thing about not defining things from the matter of age, from the maddest of edges. But I'm gonna go with the fact that we're probably gonna have something to eat. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. All right, and I, I got, maybe I, got, I, I have to consume less, is, and that, that might be a, a good thing for me to learn. Sure, and uh, that you never needed to consume as much as you're consuming. Exactly. Yeah. I gotta step so maybe, away. I gotta maybe step, there's some moderation. I, I, gotta st- I gotta step away for a moment, so just keep talking. Okay, I'll okay. do that. Okay. Okay. But I'm not. Then I'm gonna sit in silence, and then people are gonna go, "This is awkward." There's silence on the radio. Isn't she supposed to say anything?
no. Um, maybe um, moderation is not a bad thing for us to learn. Maybe a little less consumption, a little less hype about consumption, a little less fear concerned with consumption might be the good thing here. And I know one thing, when uh, when the reaction in this is going to be go buy more shit. You don't have enough shit. You need shit. You need to buy more shit. Buy something. Buy more shit. Um, and I've noticed one thing. Every time a new press release or they up the fear level, we go buy shit. People run out and buy shit. And then they buy more shit. And then they don't have enough shit because what if my shit runs out? So I got to buy more shit. Yeah. Buy it all up. So buy more shit. <laughs> buy everything. Or maybe, maybe buy less shit, right? Fill your house with toilet paper. Fill it up with toilet And I don't understand that with the toilet paper. I'm sorry. I don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't know what. I, I wonder. I, I, I can't. I mean, okay. There's, there's a lot of things that maybe you might worry about missing out on in a shortage. Uh, but <laughs> toilet paper. Uh, I, I, I I don't what's what started that what I mean there's something that somehow got into people's minds on a on a wide scale that that, that toilet paper was going to be the thing and whoop, it was and gone. I'm gonna go with they saw a meme. Uh, it, it, I'm gonna go with oh this started with a fucking meme. Yeah. Somebody saw a meme about toilet paper, and it, and then it just started. John just Carson fucking started. Yeah, it's like mass brainwashing there. That and, <laughs> and, and and I mean, it's not. It wasn't even just here in the U.S., which I could no, un, no, I could understand no, had, if it was. We had, a, we had yeah. <laughs> but, now, people did the same. They did it for a whole evening here until they kind of went. Oh wait, what what what? Yeah, what are we doing? They just went with it. They just went with it. <laughs> And then the next day, they kind of went, oh, wow, I just went with it. Yeah. 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 And, and then, you know, here's the thing. Um, you're spending all, all your, your cash up on toilet paper. Well, you're not going to need it because you're not, then you can't afford the food uh, that you're going to have to eat. Then you're going to have to shit to use the toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and I don't. That's not even okay. I would. I. I. I had the little moment where I went. Where my my uh, my inner privileged little child went. Uh, oh no! What if we run out of coffee? Right. Right. Coffee. I mean, that's 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 an emergency. That's a real one there. <laughs> but not really, though, is it? I'm thinking we could use a coffee break, some of us, right? No. Would it really be all that bad to go through a little while without coffee? Oh, absolutely. Couldn't do it. That's. I'm going to go with my that, grandmother. That, that, that's end of the world. Me. That's end of the world stuff right that's there. That's end of the world? Yeah, coffee, man. Oof. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I remember my grandmother who went through the war, right? The big yeah. war, the war, the big one, right? Uh -huh, right. The WW2, right? Uh and 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 during that shit, I know you might not felt it so bad, but Denmark was actually occupied by Germany for five years. Yeah. So during that time, my grandmother lived under rations. Everything was rationed. Right. And one of the things they couldn't get was coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they had this coffee, Rick's coffee, that's made from grain and stuff like that. And I'm going to tell you, my grandmother appreciated a cup of coffee in a way I will never do. Well, I, you know, here, here's the thing. I don't want to feel like I'm living under Nazi occupation. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying, let's go out and deprivate ourselves from everything so we will once feel grateful, right? I'm just saying, it may not all be a bad thing, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because most of us, I don't know about you, but me, I I never lacked anything. Okay. Never, not in my life. Well, that's good. That's great. No, I, uh, I mean, well, oh, there was always like when I, when I was a kid, we were like really poor, and um, and but there was always food. It was never the best food. But uh, there was always some food there for us to eat, whatever whatever it happened to be. Yeah. So. 
Oh, by the way, ha have we mentioned yet? This is Perspectums with Circle, and uh, I am Grimner. I'm sitting as a uh, guest here on our show uh, on RLM Radio. And we did not even do the butts and bodies and all that. Yeah, they know who they are. Yeah, they know. <laughs> yeah. And we did tell them to calm the fuck down, people. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with, here's, because um, uh, that's what I was thinking. The first week, we went into the lockdown thing, right? And and I, I I have a hard time seeing it as a lockdown. Why? Because I'm not locked down. Well, you are and you're not. I, I mean, you can certainly leave your house. Like any of us can leave our house. But you can't, like, go to the bar, right? No, I can't go to the bar. Uh, you can't go to the record store. I don't think they have record stores there, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if they did have a record store here. Uh, it would be cool. Okay, first of all, I don't go to stores much in my life, so that's pretty much probably why I don't feel locked down. Okay, wait, wait. I know that you are a big music person, and it probably I am. You still are. Uh, but back in your in your teenage and early twenty days, yeah. you tell me you didn't go to record stores. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. And I did five years ago when I was living in Copenhagen. All right. And I, I got five years ago, I was buying albums to vinyl albums records, right? Because I have a, al yeah. I have a um, record player. Yeah. And I, and I, even five years ago, I, um, uh, I, I ordered new albums on vinyl. Because I liked having it on vinyl. No, that's great. I, the vinyl's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. It cost a fortune to get a new uh, album uh, on the vinyl, but it, it's kind of a you know it's a, it's a little bit of a pain because yeah. you have to get up every twenty minutes, yeah. turn it over, yeah. or put a new one on. <laughs> yeah. But I'm gonna go with that. Um, what I'm seeing is, I, I and it might just be me who are really naive and all this, but um, I don't feel locked down. Okay. I don't. I don't really feel locked down either because, well, I'm always, I'm, I'm, I, I stay here most, you know, unless I need something and then I go out and get it. So mm -hmm. I mean, for me, nothing's really changed. Um, the only thing, the, the main thing that changed is now when I take my dog for a walk up in the woods and down on the beach, it's full of people. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, so there, are pe people are going. They're not going to work. They're uh, all working from home with their kids who aren't going to school. What the fuck are these people going to do? They're going to take walks. Okay. They're out there taking walks with their yeah. kids and their dogs. Are they, are, are they, are, I've never seen so many out walking in the in the nature as uh, as now. Are they are they staying away from each other? Yeah. 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 Okay. We wave, say hi when we walk <laughs> by. All right. You should all walk around with like megaphones so you can talk from a further distance. <laughs> I stopped and talked. I, just down uh, the street on my way to the beach, they're building a new house, and they have been for the last six months, and I'm really fascinated by the project, right? Yeah. I think it's fascinating. You hear people, they come in, and then from nothing, they're building a house. So I'm really following it, right? And okay. now the, the Finnish people moved in. And I talked to those the other day because I walked by and I said, wow, people, are are you as impressed as I am that you're building a house? Or have you done it so much that it's just yeah. pretty much yeah. every day? And the guy told me, no, I get, I, I, I am impressed every time we build a house. Yeah. And I did it for 20 years now. And I still am amazed that we do it. Terrific. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So we had a long talk. Yeah. We, we, we did not need megaphones or anything. We had a nice long talk about building houses and how he learned it from his dad and he did this with his dad and how his dad told him to every day take pride in the little stuff you did and walk around and look at it and say you did a good job because that way you're always going to deliver quality. Okay, good. That's kind of neat thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't I don't feel locked down. I see a lot of people. I especially see a lot of kids hanging out with their dads. Right. I haven't seen that. In, I don't see that a lot. But all of a sudden, they're all the dads are out playing with their kids because they're driving mom nuts, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
boy. And I don't have it bad. I'm going to I have a coworker. I have many coworkers who have kids, right? Yeah. And I have one coworker who has got five kids and her husband is having to go to work and she's working from home and she's a manager of 15 people and she's working from home and she has to be a school teacher for five kids from who are like in second grade up to 10th grade, right? Right. While she tries to do work for eight hours, mm-hmm. not going nuts, right? And her kids don't get to see their friends. So I, I got it easy. My biggest problem right now in all this is I, I, have, a, I have too much time. Yeah. Yeah, suddenly I have too much time. I miss being busy. But they, but they've. I mean, you are doing some work from home, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm keeping up my work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just all of a sudden, I'm not spending three hours on a train, oh, and right. I'm not doing pointless, stupid meetings that has no point because we cut all that so, away. We're so, trying to cut down on the meetings. Finally, uh, so they, <laughs> they're 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 not they're not doing uh, the teleconferencing. Yeah, a little bit, but it's, you know, it's difficult. Usually I work in finance, man, and usually you have 15 people for every little thing you want to do. You got to hear 15 or 20 people if they think it's okay. So we (laughs) usually have all these big meetings with tons of people, and you can't do that on Skype, right? It's not fun. So now what we do is we take them two by two, and it just, it's faster. It doesn't take as much time, and I'm not spending that much time in just pointless meetings. Right. The meetings I do have now are valuable and to the point. Right. But they're going to try something Friday. <laughs> um, they're going to try to do a, um, a Friday bar Skype thing where 60 people are going to hang out on Skype drinking uh, afternoon beer together. And I'm going to go with that's going to turn into chaos. Next week, we have big room planning where 120 people are going to plan their work together for the next 10 weeks. I'm looking forward to how that is going to work out from Skype. Because <laughs> usually we'd meet up like you know, 50 people or 60 people in a two-day session in big room where you do big room planning, right? Mm-hmm. And now they have to do it um, individually on Skype. That's going to be fun. We're learning new stuff. Right. And um, uh, I I read, um, because I really try to find the positives in all of this, um, just to counter all the other shit. Um, And I read in China, uh, there are parts of China now where they can see more than 10 feet ahead. Mm -hmm. Because the smog has lifted, right? Um, Yeah, I've heard of that about all all around the world. uh, uh you know, the various air is getting cleaner in different cities, you know? Uh, yeah. Um, People are staying home with their kids, spending much more time with their kids. You know, the, a, lot, a lot of the factories are shut down. The cars aren't on the road. Uh, yeah. So so a, a lot of, uh, you know, cleaner air and water, yeah. too. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to go with that if you took away the planned obsolescence shit from our planet, right? Which is like probably one of the most devastating ideas human beings ever got. Yeah. Uh, then we could keep the production to what it is now. And they'd make better products. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of, I mean, if, if you're not planning for this thing to break down after X amount of time or uh, hours of operation, then um, then they'll, they'll make a better product because they don't want people to be pissed off that they, this thing they bought three years ago suddenly doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not going to go with I'm I'm not going to go with that everything is going to fall apart here. I'm going to go with maybe it's going to downsize a little. Yeah, see I'm not uh, the, the thing that concerns me is like I said before, it's the tyranny. The tyranny rolling in um and and you notice that uh, the, the, these people, these politicians that are in charge or so they believe, um they uh they don't want this to end. They love this. They they yeah. think this is terrific. And so, like, uh, here's somebody come out and say, oh, this will be over in X amount of time. And they're going, oh, hold on a minute. No, no, no. Don't be giving people uh, hope that they might get past this. 
oh no, we got to we got to maintain control here. And even yeah. after this supposed virus is gone, what what are they going to let go of, and what are they going to keep? Uh, yeah, that, that that's that's where the that's where the real problem comes in here. Uh, that that's this the dangerous is, stuff. Yeah, that is dangerous. That mm-hmm. and uh and and people panicking in in masses and starting behaving like idiots, like hoarding and shit. Instead of just keeping it calm and using just a little rational thought, and we'll get through this, right? Yeah, yeah. We really got to understand most of this is man-made, right? Taking all apart it. it's the all, it's all man-made. That is man-made. Yeah, yeah. It's all man-made. There's no most of it part. It, <laughs> but all... the virus, the virus in itself, is just such a small part of this. Mm-hmm. But it's a virus they created. Um, yeah. It's a virus they created. It's a virus they intentionally released in order to uh, roll this stuff out around the world, to roll this tyranny out around the world, the lockdowns and all all of the other things, the rationing, the government's in control type stuff. Yes, Mm. that's that's. uh, Yeah, it's all man. It's all man made. None of this is. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but 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 I do get I if I really get a little concerned. No, not really, because that really concerns me though. Is um, all the small businesses, and that that gets that gets my concern. A lot of people that spend a lot of time of their life building up a small business that is going to vanish in zero time. <laughs> right, a lot of them already have. Yeah, I mean they they just can't afford to not be operating for even a couple of days, no less weeks on end. Yeah, and so. Uh, but what I am seeing in Denmark, at least I don't know about America, but I'm seeing a lot of donation in Denmark. I'm seeing a lot of people that uh, like the bars are closed, right? Yeah. So what they do is that they go down to the grocery store, they get themselves the beer they would drink at the bar. And then they go home, and then they drink their beer, and then they donate the the difference in prices to the bar. So that I would have spent this if I were at your bar, so I'm going to donate that to you so that I keep a bar when this is over. Sure. That is going on a lot. Uh, same with hairdressers and all that. People are are just sending them money to. I I would have gotten my hair cut from you this month, so here's the money. That way you you stay in business. Yeah. Well, those only go so far. I mean, if if you're still getting some kind of income, that's the. Uh, uh, yeah, and I know I I'm really fucking spoiled in this. I know. Because mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people they don't they, there's no income left for them. No, I understand, yeah. and and the rest of us who are getting an income, um, what I'm what I'm sensing is a lot of people that are having an income are trying to spend it on the businesses that they can no longer go to. Yeah. Hopefully that's enough for many of them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And then they just they, they did just like use stimulus packages and all that for small businesses and um wager compensation funds and all that so yeah. But yeah, the politicians are enjoying this. They get to control everything, and oh, they got yeah. the people loving it. They get to play um, Santa Claus. Yeah. yeah. Even the queen, the queen never addressed her people outside her usual events, right? Right. Never. We never had a crisis big enough for this. Right. And no, she went out. Even, even the, the pope, addressed. you know, the, the pope too, yeah. right? He's doing, a, you know, video things now instead of in person. And that is when you know they are messing with you, man. Mm-hmm. They're, if not, if they're not creating this, then they're spinning off it at least. Oh uh, yeah, they are loving it. Yeah. 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 So, well, mm, I, I'm going to go with um, what I'm seeing. This is fun, though, right? My company is. Um, they're seeing that our production is higher. <laughs> Oh, well, great. Maybe it'll stay that way then, huh? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, people having to plan their own work, the managers aren't in their back faces all the time. They don't have to go to management meetings and sit there. They don't have to do all this. They can actually just do their job. So our production is up, which is kind of fun. That's great, yeah. Yeah. 
So I'm going to go with this. This is going to change the way dates work. Uh, Maybe for the better way. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Well, and that leads me to the step three of my how to to get over the corona. Um, uh, Where step one was stay calm, right? Right. And assume less. Right. I know you're not really agreeing because you like no. I think you are, but I'm. Tr- we don't want to hit no, the I, I agree. Stay, hours where we live on mud. I agree with that. I, I, I agree. Stay calm. Consume less. A little, a little moderation might not be bad. And uh, step three is to uh, read more. Sure. Yeah. Reading is fun. Reading is good. Yeah. It's, if uh, you're home and you got more time and help, you're help. not out there and you got more time because you ain't got all the stores to go um, shop in, right? Right. Um, read more. Yeah. I don't think anybody ever was damaged by reading a book. <laughs> I know some people think that, uh, but I, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't either, but I'm... I, I don't read the kind of books that would damage me. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure, Grim? <laughs> uh, no. Because <laughs> no. <laughs> it's some weird books that they think will damage you, though. There are. There are. Huh? Are there any books that will damage you, you think? Um, I don't know. Whatever, like, if you, if you read, like, uh, Keynesian economics, that's damaging. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they banned it in America. Yeah, exactly. To one. kill a mockingbird is considered dangerous, because right? They say nigger. To some people, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, yeah. you know. Maybe educate, think more. Or maybe, as this title of the show is, okay, reading might not be known, but but um, go in, right? Spend this time on, on thinking and learning stuff and read perspectives and and you 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 can slow down life a little now sure. it doesn't have to be so fast now you got nowhere to go you got nothing you have to do right right you got no stores to hit no nothing right yeah so maybe just ease into it read a little more books think a little more thoughts maybe start a hobby right all those things are good yeah yeah, whatever whatever it is you've been putting off for all these years that you were someday I'm gonna do this. Well, someday huh? here, it's someday. <laughs> yeah, because what I'm seeing is a whole lot of Netflix, right? Yeah, 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 a lot of Netflix. And I'm not I'm not too good for Netflix. I watch Netflix too, but maybe I don't have to fill out all my waking moments now that I got a little more time on Netflix. Right. Maybe it's time to read some books. Yeah. Or write write your own book. Oh, write a book, yeah. 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 I bet you could write a, an, an interesting book, Grimnir. Do, do something creative, whatever oh. that happens to be. Yeah. Keeps your brain sharp. Yeah. I've thought, I've so, thought about writing books, but yeah, you know. You would write an interesting book. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, see, I have a problem is 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 you know, especially like if it's a novel, you got to do like these personal interaction things, and uh, you know, uh, uh, books require like uh, romance or wh- whatever interactions between people, and and I'm not very good with those. I don't I don't really understand people. Um, no, but not, you could do, but you could do. I uh, you could do a book called I just pulled this out of a. a a grumpy anarchist ass. Yeah, just fresh, fresh out of my butt. Here you go. <laughs> Here you go. That's my book. <laughs> now go read it. <laughs> you could use your toilet paper on it if you like, or use it for toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm actually enjoying this time to uh, read a little more and do a little more. Um, but then I, 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 I started on the whole meditation thing about a year ago, right? Yeah. Because cause, uh, I was a little bit tired of um, of reacting to everything. Yeah. Because cause, cause I'm, I'm, like I'm a little bit of a control freak. I like control. Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Not much. Just a little bit, Lou. <laughs> uh, 
one wrestle. Uh, yes. So, uh, and then it dawned on me, like uh, about a year ago, or maybe two years ago, it dawned on me. Hey, there ain't a lot of control in reacting all the time, right? No. And I was out there reacting, man. Yeah. Like yeah. my whole life was one big reaction. Right. I, I had. I reacted to thoughts, I reacted to feelings, I reacted to stimulus, you could control me, you could just poke on my buttons and you would control me and I would just go, right? Okay. And all these strings where people could just say something and then I would just react. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I figured, I don't okay. want to do that so, no so, more. So, so, so tell me this, you're, you're, uh, you're doing meditation, right? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm doing a lot of mindful meditation. All right, the, the first part, the first part of meditation is well, that depends on what kind of meditation you do, right? Does it? I, I'm I, doing my okay. I'm doing mindful meditation. Okay, here, here, here's, so here's for me. They're about creating. Um, for me, what they do is they is about um, um, Giving me, giving me enough mindfulness to be aware of what goes on in me and outside of me. Okay. Well, here's the, here's the first thing. What I always hear, the first thing about prior to doing a meditation is you have to clear your mind. No. Then you're not, then you're not listening to, uh, to good meditation coaches. Well, that's, no. what, that's what I read. Every, I, all the places I've looked. You can't. It's not possible to clear your mind. That, that's my thing is, how, how can I meditate if I can't clear my mind? And I don't know how to clear my mind. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> my, that's, my, all that the mind, that's, that's, that's not how you meditate. No. The mind never, my mind never stops. It's always more, you know, yeah. try and clear it. And there's always new stuff squeak, you know, uh, pushing yeah. in behind. And so like, all right. Okay. So you focus on a point in space. No, you don't. No. See, see, it, it, no. see. you no, should no, no. you should do a show on 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 how to meditate. Yes, but this is the picture I use for it, right? Okay. I use the picture of your mind is like a freeway, right? Uh huh. Big old road, and on that road drives cars, and all those cars are your thoughts and your feelings. And they come in and out. And sometimes they're really fast and a lot of them on the street. And other times they drive slow and there are fewer on them, right? My mind is like a traffic jam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a traffic jam. There's all this shit going and you can't control what drives in and out of your car on your road. Yeah. Thoughts and feelings come and go in different tempi and, and in different mangles. And sometimes they jam up and sometimes they just rush through, right? Right. When you're not being mindful, you're out there on the road, either trying to stop them or you're getting into them and running from them and trying to find the right one to get into. And once you get into it, you're not taking the driving seat. You're taking the back seat and it just drives you, right? Apparently. So what, you, what you want to do is you want to find the curb. You want to find a, a, a rock out on the sideway and sit and watch. Okay. Well, anti anti points out that you replace, not clear. So you don't clear your mind; you replace it with exactly. Something you replace else. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you you don't want to go out there because then you're struggling. Now you're fighting, and you most of all you get failures, right? Oh, I can't stop my mind. So, see, I can't figure this out. I'm not doing it right. That's not the idea. Right. Well, I Everybody. that's what. I Everybody who meditates, <laughs> they accidentally step into a car during the meditation. Then they stepped into one of those thoughts, and the thought ran with them. And what you want to do is, whenever you realize my mind wandered or I went with a thought, you want to bring it back to your breath. You don't want to start, you know, telling yourself, see, you did it wrong, or there you failed again, or anything. No, no, it's perfectly normal. What you want to do is just be aware of it and bring it back. Okay. Just back into your breath. Sure. And and most of the time, you're going to be out there more than in your breath. All right. But if you can get that hole where I'm going to try to sit on the sidewalk and watch all these cars go by, uh -huh. all these thoughts and feelings that goes by, 
And once in a while, if one of them has your attention and you want to get into it, then you can slow it down. You don't have to walk into the street and try to stop all the others and get in while it's rushing. Just slow it down and you sit in the driving seat. Okay. All right. Because well, you're, no, you, it's you are, impossible to clear your mind before you do this. And it's impossible to clear your mind while you're doing this. All right. So, so with, really, free and slave is right. You want to replace it. No, anti. No, anti, yeah. <laughs> you want to replace it. And what it definitely teaches you is that uh, what it taught me is that I am 100% in control of my thoughts and my feelings because I control which of them I engage. If I don't engage them, there's a thought, I don't engage it, it just passes by. And they pass by, thoughts and feelings pass by all the time. Sure. I'm just trying to get to the point where I engage them when I want to and how I want to and in the tempo I want to and not out there reacting to them. And and I can only say meditation did that for me. Okay, well, that's great. And I, I have not once hit the uh, nirvana state where I have no thoughts and my head is clear. Never. And I'm not even going to go there. I don't even want that. That's not, that's not my end goal. My end goal is simply just to keep aware of. I'm not, I'm not even going to go with that. I would like my cars to drive slow all the time. No, they're going to drive in whatever tempo they're going to drive in. Okay. I want to do it. I don't want to react to it. I want to act on it when I want to act on it. That's good. That's good. And I think it helps me a lot in this Corona shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Because they're just sending cars in. <laughs> Maddening, weird, ugly looking and dangerous looking cars in speeds that are insane. Loaded with numbers to distract you. Uh, Mad Max style cars. Yeah. <laughs> Full of numbers, tainted, tainted numbers. Yeah. You can sit around and you can either share them or you can compare them or you can this or you can that with them, but really they're nothing. They're fictive, right? We yeah. don't even know how many died from this. We're guessing everything. I don't know. In Denmark, um, we decided... Not I wasn't part of the decision, but in Denmark we 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 uh, we decided that um, if you die from a lung disease, uh -huh. it's because of smoking. Oh, it doesn't matter why. It just is. That's because why. you have. Well, you can't prove causality in smoking, right? No, you can't. No. So what they did say was, uh, since it's so likely, we're just going to report all deaths uh, from lung diseases as smoking. Right, because they want that number up anyway. Yeah, yeah. They're not. They're not going to go with. Some of them might be cars, you know. <laughs> right. Pollution from cars. Well, or just uh, uh, long. This you know? woman, she she spent her entire life in downtown Copenhagen, living in one of the most trafficked areas. She never smoked. She died from uh, severe lung cancer, smoking. Yeah. Yeah, she must have had somebody who smoked in her apartment, right? Right. Like or third hand smoking. It's got nothing to do with the cars. Of course not. Cuz that would and go, that would go against the agenda. You know, yeah. they, they want to demonize the tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know if you do the same in America. I was going to go you probably do. Well, the the American Lung Association, the American Heart Association, they both do. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Because because if if more people are continuing to die of smoking, then they keep getting their funding. Mm, yes. Yeah, that, yeah, and that's what it comes down to, really. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. The the Danish Cancer um, um, Society, right? One the one of the biggest. Um, they're they're a corporate uh, commercial company in Denmark. Yeah. They're not even an NGO. They say they're an NGO. But they're on the stock market, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And those are the people we look to uh, that's going to cure cancer for us. Right. They're making 
tons of money on they, cancer. They, they, right? they, they love cancer. <laughs> How are they going to fight it, right? Yeah. I don't know. It just seems really weird. Oh, it does. But, but that, that's you know. the stuff you figure out once you start reading and thinking and applying just a tad bit of critical thinking, especially to the numbers all around you. Well, just just uh, think of all those years. Remember Jerry Lewis? Yeah. Okay. All those years he ran that telethon every year, collecting millions and millions and millions of dollars. And there was never a single potion or cure or anything. That, what was it? Muscular dystrophy? Was that his thing? Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> Nothing ever came out of it. He just went on yeah. there every year and did his whatever it was, twenty four, forty eight hours thing, and pe- people sent in all their money. Uh, and nothing, nothing, nothing came out of it. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, and they had no interest in curing that because, well, why, mm. why would they do that if the money was just going to dry up? Dry up. Yeah. You know. uh, so. I don't know. I maybe because I worked with actuarians and statistics for a lot of years, and I work with data scientists now, right? Yeah. So I know one thing: every piece of number and statistics and data is a load of bullshit. It's all biased. Right. It it all got the shape from the cup that that poured it out of the lake of data, right? Well, it's uh. You However, know, you grab data. When, when, the, when the people that want the data come to you and say, "This is this is the data, what I want the data to say," so you figure out which portions of the data you have will make your numbers agree with what I want to say. Yeah, <laughs> it has nothing, nothing to do with reality whatsoever. Uh, this, no. this is. Because there is not a single SQL reading right now that doesn't have a uh, where to or a um, 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 having in sentence. Right? Yeah. Nobody just takes out data. Right, right. You, you, have, the, you have the where is or where to or the uh, when in, having in, all those where you group, where you calculate, where you take out, where you, all that. Right. The minute you group, you know that you're an SQL writer. The minute you do a group uh, joint or a group by, you are literally manipulating data. Absolutely. And I don't think I don't I don't I don't think any of these data people have written an SQL for years that didn't have a group by function in it. Of course not. <laughs> well, what would be the benefit of that? Is there, uh, exactly. <laughs> I mean, here's the raw data. Uh, here's what it actually says. What do you want it to say? Yeah. Oh, I wanted to group by. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's really key to understanding that the more data they put in there, it does not make the water clearer. Well, it gives the pictures that they want, so. Yeah. Yeah, all it does is muddy the water for you, all those numbers. Yeah. And especially right now, I I should do that. I should really try for a day just to make a note of how many numbers I've been thrown at me about this corona for just one day. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. There's, there's, no, there's no end to these no. numbers. <laughs> oh, and they tell you absolutely nothing because you have no way of going back and fact check it. You have no way of source checking it. So what you can do is you can you can have credit to some sources more than others, but that doesn't say anything about the data. Yeah. Besides, if you just worked a little bit with data, I worked with actuarians. I know how much data you need to make a somewhat certain prediction, right? Mm-hmm. You need a lot of data. We don't even have that much data on this right now. Well, it's okay. They can make it. They can make it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not a problem. Sure <laughs> yeah. I can't. You remember when that uh, conjunction site I found where they did the um, correlation things? That uh, how how the number of um, suicides in Texas correlate with the number of strawberries eaten in right, Kansas. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's an right? interesting site. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's pretty much the shit they're throwing at you now. Right. You just take two totally disparate things and figure out how they work together, which, of course, they don't, yeah. but you can make it look like they do. <laughs> two two arbitrary points, and you draw a line, and then you extend it. See? Yep. I predicted. What? <laughs> and we can project that out to whatever. Yeah. Okay, so and we, if, what if we you have... don't really apply a lot of critical thinking, you're going to go nuts in this. You're going to start believing and running with the numbers. Sure. And you might tell me you're not fear-based, and you might tell me I don't feel scared, but you're running with numbers, and you're panicking, and you're not thinking, and you're just doing. Because right. they so, don't so... want you to sit down and go... I'm going to go with go, go donkey, man. Go stop her and sit down like a donkey and say, I know. <laughs> Remember Cirque's first point. Don't panic. Stay fucking calm, people. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to have to play that um, fuck that meditation every hour on RLM. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Grimnir. For what? For um, doing this radio with me. Oh. Thank you yeah, for doing the radio. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, it's great. Yeah. Uh, I I have an um, a confession. All right. I um uh, I didn't speak much when you told me to keep the radio going. You didn't. No. No. Oh. No. I I did a little bit of awkward silence and then I whispered. <laughs> <something>. <laughs> I warn people, though, that we're going to do a little awkward silence. It's going to be really uncomfortable for some. Yeah. No, uh, sometimes silence is awkward. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. Sometimes it's very comfortable. It took me a long time because I'm a, a talkative, extrovert, kind of busy kind of person. And with this whole meditation, I had to learn silence, right? Yeah. To not have to fill it out. <laughs> Flash is calling for a nice social distance collective hug. Yeah. I think Flash <laughs> is getting hungry, though, and I should go cook some food for him. All right. Well, I'm getting hungry, too. So. Or I'll yeah. feed her. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening, and thank you very much for helping out, Grimnir, and having time to talk to me today. You betcha. And yeah. um, have a great – what time is it there? Uh, 10 to 10. Oh, no, have a great 20, night. 2149. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. It was lovely talking to you, Grimnia. I will say this, though. Um, you stand as a beacon of sanity uh, in what I right now see uh, as a very chaotic America. Yeah. All right. And to me, you stand like a beacon of sanity, so I'm really grateful for you being here. Well, I, I appreciate your perspective, but, um, or is that perspectum? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm just normal. I'm just like anybody. Yeah. I hope, I hope that uh, the reason why I think America is chaotic right now is because I see it from the media and not because it is. I hope most of America is as safe and calm and sane as you are. I wish. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, well, thanks everybody for for listening and um, and I, much love and uh, people. There is so much love and compassion and kindness in this world throughout this crisis, and it really you should spend just a little time looking at that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So send me some show notes. I will. Just make them up. I, whatever. You put your yeah. three three points and whatever else you want to add in there. Okay, I will do that. Okay, terrific. And uh, I might even say I love you people and thank you very much. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, people. Bye. <laughs>